Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Rowan and today we're going to be looking at how to deploy a bicep template from an Azure pipeline. We're going to use that to deploy an Azure container registry and then we're going to use some Docker calls in the pipeline to make sure that we can push to the container registry to make sure that permissions are set correctly. Now if you're not familiar with bicep, it's an infrastructure as code offering from Azure. An infrastructure as code itself is basically being able to define an architecture in code or a template file. This means you can reuse the file over and over again to deploy your resources anywhere you want. So if you're, suddenly your architecture and all your resources disappear, you could run your infrastructure as code setup and bring them all up again. More often than that, it's used to deploy to multiple regions. If suddenly you want to replicate all of your existing architecture for a new region, for a new deployment, then you've got it all in one place ready to go. And the other big benefit is that because it's all in a template file, you can have it in source control and you can see whenever it changes. The example project I'm going to be showing this off with today is just the default web API in .NET. And there's currently no Docker support for our project, so we're going to add that first. So in our browser, we're going to go to this link, which I'll put down below, and it's basically just a startup template from Microsoft for a basic Docker template. So we're just going to take that, and we're going to create a new file on the top of our repo called Docker file. And we're just going to open that in Visual Studio and paste in what we took before. So the only change we need to make here is to change the last line to be the name of our project file. So similarly to the Docker file for the bicep, we're just going to take another Microsoft default setup. I'll put another link for this down below, and we're just going to hit copy on this. We're going to create another new file at the top level, and this time we're going to call it main.bicep. And we're going to paste in the template code that we just copied. Now, one important thing to note is the ACR name variable at the top. This is going to be the name it gives our container registry. And it's set up at the moment to be ACR followed by the resource group ID. And it's going to take that from basically whichever resource group you've deployed to. This is okay, we can leave this in here. We're actually going to change it later. We're gonna override this variable from the pipeline. The other important thing we want to change here is setting admin user to true. Now we're gonna push this up to our Git repo. And there we go, it's pushed up. Now all the stuff that we need is pushed up to our source control. We're gonna come and create the actual pipeline itself. So we go to new pipeline, and we're gonna choose GitHub because that's where our code is located. And we'll choose bicep pipeline example, so for configuring your pipeline, it does have an option for Docker. And this basically lets you easily connect your pipeline to an Azure container registry that's already there. But because ours doesn't exist yet, we're actually gonna do everything from a base pipeline. So now we've got that, I'm just gonna save it and run it before we do anything else. But before we edit our pipeline, we actually need to set up the connection between our pipeline and our Azure resource group so it has permission to deploy. So if we go to project settings, and on the left-hand side, we go down to service connections. And now we're going to click new service connection. We're going to choose Azure Resource Manager and hit Next. And we're going to choose Service Principle Automatic. And what this is going to do is it's going to set up a service principle for us in Azure AD. And the service principle will let us manage the roles and access and permissions for our pipeline. So scope level is going to be subscription. Resource group, the one I made for this is RG Bicep Deployment. The name is just something to identify in the service connection. And we're going to tick on Grant Access to All Pipelines. Something we also need to do is set the subscription permissions so we can use containers. So if we go to the portal, go to the top left, we click on all services, we go to subscriptions, we click on our subscription, and we scroll down and click on resource providers. Now we're going to search for container, and here we're going to select the one we want, container registry, and here this will say register. Now we can go back over to our pipeline, and we're going to edit our pipeline. And we're going to start by adding some variables in the top, and these are for the registry name, and the container name. We're then going to get rid of this and we're going to search in the site for template. And we're going to select ARM template deployment. So our deployment scope is resource group because we're deploying this to a resource group specifically. You can set it higher to say subscription. You could actually use infrastructure as code to deploy a resource group. For the resource manager connection, this is where we select the service connection we just created. Resource group and the location set to UK South. For the template itself, we're going to say in here dot slash main.bicep and because our bicep template is at the top level it's just going to find the template there and now for the override template parameters we're going to put in this dash, dash acr name registry name so this refers to the parameter we looked at earlier in the bicep template and this refers to the variable we just created and for deployment mode we're going to leave it incremental and this basically means bicep is going to detect any differences between the template and the actual setup we have and it's going to make those changes if you Pick complete, it's going to destroy everything in the resource group and build it from fresh every time, and we don't really want that. And then we'll just hit add. And I'm actually also going to change the container registry name. 
because this creates a publicly accessible URL, it needs to be unique. And now we're going to hit save and run the pipeline. And now that our build succeeded, we can go back over to Azure. And here we've got our container registry deployed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to deploy our container app to our container registry from the pipeline. So if I go back over to the pipeline and go to edit pipeline, down here, we're going to create a new step and we're going to go and we're going to choose PowerShell. Now there is a Docker task for this, but like I mentioned earlier, the Docker task kind of heavily relies on the container registry already being set up. And because we can't rely on it being set up because we're creating it here, we're going to use PowerShell instead. And through using the registry name we passed in here, we can actually deterministically do the Docker deployment from the PowerShell script. So if we go to inline and we'll replace that with some lines I'll paste in here, and I'll go through these in a second when I've added it. The code for all of this is going to be in a link in the description below, so you can just pick these up from there if you need it. And we're just going to hit add. So what this is doing, this is going to start by calling Docker login. And when I said it's deterministic, what I mean is when you deploy a registry, the default URL that you need to connect to is actually going to be the registry name .azurecr.io. So we know the registry name because we set it up before, and we can pass it in here. So we also need here username and password to do a Docker login, which we'll sort out in a second. It's going to do a Docker build. It's going to build it to the URL name, which it uses to find out where to go to. It's going to use the container name that we set up before. Uh, it needs a build tag. And then the dot at the end just says build the container we've got right here. So it's going to find the Docker file that it's running next to. And lastly, we call Docker push. And this is the same tag exactly as we have up here. Now for the app ID and the secret, we need to go over to Azure AD. So in the Azure portal, go to Azure Active Directory. On the left hand side, go to App Registrations. And the top one I've got here is the one it's created for me when we set up that service connection in Azure DevOps. And in here, we have a lot of different settings we can choose to configure the security and permissions around the service principle. So we're going to start by taking the application ID and copy that. And we'll just put that in here. And we're going to go back over here and we're going to say certificates and secrets. And we're going to create a new client secret and we're going to call it template connection. And then we're going to copy the value of that and we're going to paste this in for our password. Now, in the real world, you would never store your login details directly in the code. You would use secrets or something. But for this example, we'll just leave it in there for now. And now we can just hit save and run again. And our build's passed. We can go back over to the portal, back over our resource group. We have our container registry. And now, if we go down to repositories, we have the container pushed into the repository and if we click on that. It's got the build tag we set as well. Another final thing I'm going to do is make sure that the container app is actually deployed properly by creating an instance of it. So if we go back up to our resource group, we're going to go create. And now we're going to go to container instances. I'm going to create a container for this. So we're going to call it bicep container example. The name here doesn't have to be unique. For the image source, now we can click on Azure Container Registry, find the one that we created before and find the specific image we created. And now we can hit review and create and create and just give it a second to deploy. And now it's deployed we can go to our resource. We can go to the IP address and click on copy to clipboard. And in our browser at the top, we'll paste that in. And we'll do slash weather forecast. And there we go. Our container instance is now running. So there we go. We've just learned how to deploy a bicep template through a pipeline and make sure it's got the permissions it needs to connect all the services it's using. There's so much cool stuff you can do with Bicep. And if there's anything else you'd like to see me do with it, just leave a comment or send me a message and I'll look into making a video about it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more stuff like it, check out all the other videos I've got and consider subscribing because there'll be more content like this to come. Thanks very much for watching.